Hello and welcome back to Don't Depend on Daddy the Podcast. My name is Michaela. I am your host and we are back today for the most special, fun, and exciting episode of Don't Depend on Daddy. First things first, before we talk about it, if you are not new here, you already know what's coming, but I just want to say before we get into this episode, I am outside of my usual setup. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can probably see that. I had some unexpected travel come up. Essentially, I was supposed to be back in LA by now. I was planning to record this episode in my usual setup with my mic and everything and like I said, I had some unexpected travel come up in New York and it just made sense for me to stay on Cape Cod at my parents' house rather than fly all the way back to LA just to fly all the way back to New York. So yeah, if the audio is a little bit funky or not as good as usual, I apologize. We will do a full catch up and resume regularly scheduled programming next week. But for now, this is what we're working with. So hopefully it all sounds and looks okay. Anyways, this episode is... My, ofus- my official, if I could speak, I'm nervous and excited. This episode is my official book launch podcast episode. Own Your Money is officially available. It is published today, June 20th. This episode is going up a day early to celebrate. And I am quite literally so freaking excited for you guys to read this book. I have spent so much time, so much energy. I put so much into making this book as like, amazing as I possibly could and I've been seeing your messages about all of you guys who have already ordered it and those of you who have ordered it on Kindle and have already read it and I just am so excited. I'm literally so excited I can't say it enough. I'm going to avoid trying or avoid making this episode just being like a consistent monologue of me saying how excited I am but Just for the little gist, I've spent the last week or so kind of in the DMs with so many people um, just hearing about those of you who have ordered it, your thoughts so far, especially those of you who have already read it on Kindle. Um, Own Your Money actually hit the number one new release, both in paperback and Kindle within the personal finance section on Amazon a handful of times. So she's been in the charts already. It hasn't even come out yet and she's in the charts. So I'm so excited. And that just means that you guys are showing up and you are supporting me and you're ready to learn about your finances. And I'm so excited and so grateful for that. I was a little bit nervous because for the first couple of months of pre-orders, um, you know, it was a while for the before the book came out and I was nervous about losing momentum. And it seems like as we have neared this very exciting day, you guys have all started to show up for me. So first of all, outside of the fact that I'm really excited, I'm incredibly grateful and thankful for you for supporting me on just my journey overall. You know, whether you're listening to this as your first podcast episode or you listen every week or you've been following me on Instagram or whatever, I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of the support. I never would have been in this position to even write a book if it wasn't for you. And I know that that's like the most cliche, silly thing It feels silly when I hear it, when like online influencers or whoever I follow say this kind of thing, like I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you, but I literally wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. And I, you know, have just learned so much about myself. I've just learned so much about running a business and this experience of being able to work for myself and write a book and sort of forge my own life has been such a wonderful, positive experience for me. It's completely changed my life. It's taught me so much about who I am. I am so happy and grateful that this is just the life that I get to live. Um, I talk about this in the book, but I spent like the first couple of years of my 20s just really, really depressed and unhappy and lost and confused. And I thought that something was wrong with me. Like I thought that I was broken because I just couldn't find my way um, in corporate America, you know, in work. I always got passed over for the promotion. You know, I never got the jobs that I really wanted. And when I did get the jobs that I wanted, I didn't like it. And I had a lot of issues just navigating that. And I know I'm not alone in that experience at all. Hopefully my journey is relatable in one way or resonates with you in one way or another. Um, But I just, I struggled. The first couple of years of my 20s were really hard and I feel like you know, over the last year where I've been able to work for myself and forge this path, like I've just realized how happy life can be. Um, And like I said, it sounds really cliche, but I'm just feeling a lot 
better and more excited about life. And there was a period of time there where I just didn't think anything was ever going to really work out for me. So I'm so thankful and so grateful for all of you guys who have supported me, who have purchased my products, who have purchased this book, who like my posts on Instagram and TikTok and have just made this experience possible for me. And hopefully, you know, you look at my journey and you read my book and you realize that I'm not special and, you know, what I do is something that you can do too. So all that being said, thank you so much for listening to my podcast, for buying my book, for buying the personal finance dashboard, which you can get for $10 off using the code podcast one. And yeah, I'm really grateful. I do want to say going into this week and for this week only on the topic of the personal finance dashboard, I am going to be running a little ad hoc giveaway and the only way that you can enter the giveaway to win a free PFD, I don't know how many I'm going to give away yet, Um, depends on how many people participate. If there's tons and tons of people who participate, I'll give away more. Um, But essentially what I'm going to be doing is if you purchase Own Your Money, whether it's the physical copy, whether it's the Kindle copy or the audiobook copy because it's available on all of those platforms, Um, you need to share on your Instagram story the book when you receive it. So either your order confirmation or the physical copy of the book. I can't wait to see physical copies in people's hands. Um, The Kindle copy, a screenshot on your phone if you're listening to it on audio. And let me know that you bought it. And then you need to go leave me a review on Amazon and make sure you include either your Instagram handle or your name so that I can confirm that you've also left me the review on Amazon. Amazon reviews are so, 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 so important um, because they really help, again, push the book up in the algorithm. So if you like it, go leave me a review, a five-star review. Don't leave me less than a five-star review, please. Um, I mean, be honest, but like, come on, support, support the, support the, the movement here and leave me a five-star review um, on Amazon. And once you do those two things, like I said, just make sure you've tagged me on Instagram that you share this. I'll confirm Um, that you've also left the review on Amazon, and then I'll be just DMing people. If you already purchased the PFD, don't worry. Um, You can still participate in this. If you've already purchased the personal finance dashboard, I will either Venmo you or send you the amount of money um, that you used to purchase the PFD in a gift card of your choosing, so long as I can transfer it to you online. So don't like not participate in this if you already have the PFD. I will take care of you either way. This isn't, again, it's a giveaway, so not everybody who enters is going to win, but I'm going to make sure to take care of everybody who has supported me and bought the book, um, or as many people as I can. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, and let's get into this episode. I'm actually, for this episode, going to be reading the introduction of Own Your Money, and the reason I'm doing that is because I share four of the most important lessons that I've learned in my 20s in this introduction. Um, And I think that you'll like it. This kind of sets the tone for the entire book and I'm really excited about it. So we're gonna read the intro just as like a little, I guess, overview. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see this is what the inside looks like. I'm really excited about how this all came together. I was a little bit nervous about the illustrations because it is a very like illustrated book, not in a weird way, but just in a way to make the information like a little friendlier and more digestible um, because a lot of personal finance books are really stale and dry and like they're not very fun to read. So hopefully this one's a little bit more entertaining, fun, and it helps bring some of the concepts to life um, just through some of the illustrations. It's not overly illustrated, but like the chapter intros and stuff have a little picture and everything. And I think it just looks really nice. I, you know, fought... I fought with my publisher a little bit um, over some of the illustrations because I really didn't want it to be too illustrate-y. Um, They actually wanted to put more in here, but I feel like we found the perfect happy medium and I'm happy with how it turned out. And also at the end of every chapter, there's little roundups and action steps that you can take to implement um, and summarize the action steps throughout the chapter. So if you are you know, in a position where maybe you've read some finance books and you're like, okay, that was great, but like, I still don't know what to do. You will not feel that way after you read Own Your Money. But anyways, just as an overview, there are eight chapters in this book and then an intro and a closing thoughts section where I sort of wrap everything up. 
So if you are ready to go through all of this, the little tagline is practical strategies to budget better, earn more, and reach your six-figure savings goal. So if you're ready to do those things, you'll want to pick up the book. I'll read through the chapters quickly, and then we're going to read the intro, and we'll talk about the lessons. So chapter one is getting organized, laying the groundwork. It's called get organized, get started. Chapter two is called budget is not a bad word. So you're learning my signature budgeting method, the zero based three bucket budget, and then also how to make it a 50, 30, 20 budget, as well as budgeting tools and spreadsheets. So which one's right for you, um, whether it be an app or a a spreadsheet. Chapter three is how to set and reach your financial goals. Um, Chapter four is how to spend your money on the things that matter. So learning how to spend your money and not like do what I did, which we'll talk about in the intro, which I'm going to read. Chapter five is called investing. Never heard of her. So you'll learn how to invest. We go through my flower shop analogy, which if you follow me on Instagram or you join my TikTok lives, you've heard this before, but we talk about it in the book. It's the perfect analogy if you struggle with understanding different investment types. Chapter six is called success is hidden in your routines. So financial routines, that's my favorite chapter. Chapter seven is called Career Conundrum, and we talk about the whole premise that your dream job does not exist. The earlier you figure that out and accept that, the happier you'll be. And chapter eight is increasing your earning potential. So side hustles, negotiating for a raise, um, negotiating your salary, all those kinds of things. So there's lots of good stuff in here, and you should go order her if you haven't. Anyways, we are going to read the introduction. This isn't super long, so let's get into it. Introduction. There is immense pressure on young adults to figure out their lives early on. You're told you need to get your dream job right out of college and start climbing the corporate ladder. Beyond the stress of establishing a lifelong career at such a young age, you may feel pressure to do things like move to a big city, have a cool apartment, maintain a bustling social life, the list goes on. It's hard. It's scary. And there's no blueprint for what to do until now. The hardest years of my life were the best thing that happened to me. You may know me as the creator behind Break Your Budget, but the journey that led to this book started years before I had my own platform. If I could rewind to the evening before I started my first job out of school as a business analyst, I would tell myself to buckle the hell up because things are about to get rocky for a very long time. That's because my first day of work was the commencement of what I call the endless cycle. Wake up, run, shower, commute, work, commute, repeat. Okay, yes, there was good with the bad. I'm not going to lie. Commuting into Boston, wearing my suit, and walking through huge, shiny doors in the heart of the back bay made me feel important. I grew up watching movies that glamorize working in the city, wearing professional outfits, making lots of money, and sitting in a high-rise office with panoramic views. Here I was on my first day of work, living what felt like a movie. Also, I wanted this job. I worked my ass off to get a job at a Fortune 500 company in a competitive rotational program. I went through hours and hours of interview super days, which are marathon interview days and case studies to get there. Yet after the first week of living the corporate life, the only thing getting me through each day was knowing that my paycheck was on the way. I got paid every other Friday and having a salary meant this was the most money I'd ever made. I couldn't wait to see what my my biweekly check would be. Friday rolled around, and the first thing I did when I woke up at 5.30 that morning was log into my bank account. My heart sank when I saw it. I was barely breaking $1,600, which was almost $300 less than what I thought it would be. Unfortunately, I didn't realize just how much tax would be taken out, and after the taxes were combined with the 5% I was contributing to my 401k, I felt defeated. Over the course of the first few months in that job, I lived at home and saved as much money as I possibly could. I didn't have a system in place. I just tried to keep my spending to less than $500 a month so I could save around $2,500 each month. I knew if I wanted to move out of my parents' house and live that part of the dream, I'd have to map out my expenses to make sure I could afford it. Average rent prices in Boston were more than $1,000 per month, which was nearly an entire paycheck for me. At the end of that first summer, I found a tiny apartment in the North End neighborhood of Boston. My portion of the rent was $900 for a tiny room. It had one window and no closet. All I could fit inside my room were a full-size bed with no frame and a dresser that fit only half of my clothes. But I figured rent was going to be my biggest expense, so if I could keep that low, I could have better control over my monthly spend. That was the way my brain worked. I don't know how or why I thought about money this way. I obsessed over spending the least amount of money possible and getting the most out of every dollar. Over time, this had a detrimental effect on my mental health. 
Once I moved and started having real bills and obligations, I knew it was time for me to put together a budget. At this point, I didn't have any financial goals or a plan in place. I just knew that keeping track of my spending was probably a good idea so that I could make sure I was saving. I started by tracking my expenses on the notes app on my iPhone. Every time I spent money, I wrote down the date, the amount, and what it was for. I had a separate note for each month, and I'd start by writing down the expenses I knew I had to pay, such as rent and my train pass. I managed to do this for about two months, but it was hard to keep up with, and I never actually tallied up the total. I also found that when I spent money and felt guilty about it, I just didn't write it down. And if I didn't write it down, it didn't happen, right? Right. Ultimately, I decided to graduate to a spreadsheet in the hopes it would be a bit easier to visualize what was going on. I am a visual person, so laying out my expenses enabled me to actually see where my money was going. One day at work when I was bored, I opened up Excel and put together a very basic budget template. I had five overarching categories and within each category, I made a few subcategories. It looked a little like this. If you're on YouTube, I will show you what this looks like in the book so you can see it, but otherwise I'll read through the high level categories. I had living expenses, food, social, and miscellaneous. In total, my spending was 2,360 and my savings was whatever was left. If you want to see the actual budget, you got to buy the book. Okay, moving into, we're going to continue reading. After a few months of tracking my spending and diligently saving, I learned how to get smart and optimize my budget. I could shift money out of categories in which I wasn't spending as much as, much as I thought. And if I just didn't spend any money, I could save more and more. It started to become addictive to see my bank account grow. Mind you, all of my savings were in my checking account. I wasn't investing beyond my 401k and I hadn't opened any other accounts yet. I was just hoarding cash, which isn't the most strategic way to save, but at the time I didn't know any better. I kept up this routine for about two years until I switched jobs. Long story short, I hated my first job. It took me months to find a new job that I was excited about. And once I finally did, there was a catch. I had to take a pay cut. Accepting this job was a turning point for me. I knew that if I were taking home less money, I'd need to continue being diligent with my spending and saving, even more than I had been before. Beyond that, I wanted to find ways to start making more money because I knew it would be a while before my salary changed. This is when my business, Break Your Budget, was born. I had successfully saved and invested nearly $50,000 in just over two years by contributing to my 401k, intentionally saving $1,000 per month by cutting my expenses mercilessly, and putting 100% of any bonus I received directly into savings. I now had friends and peers coming to me for tips and advice on how they could build a budget for themselves. Why couldn't I share that with more people? Eventually, I started offering one-on-one budgeting consults to some of my followers. They would pay me in exchange for help building their budget. I couldn't believe it. Any extra money I made from doing this went directly into my savings. It was fun. I was side hustling before side hustles were cool. It gave me something to look forward to after work and pour my own creativity into. Fast forward a few months and the world stopped as a global pandemic hit. You know the story. Like so many others, I got sent home and had extra free time after work. So to keep busy, I took what I learned from my job and poured myself into Break Your Budget. I also took some online courses that taught me about branding, social media, website design, copywriting, and more. Basically, I sought out all the skills that I couldn't learn at my day job. I turned into a machine. I would spend eight hours a day working my nine to five job and at 5 p.m. I'd pivot toward break your budget for which I'd spend three to four hours in the evenings talking to my one-on-one budget clients, creating content for my social media, starting an email newsletter and building a website. I didn't know it then, but I was planting the seeds to something bigger than myself. It was fun and it made me feel less alone during a very isolating time. I built a comprehensive budgeting template to help manage my own finances and eventually I started selling it to my followers. I was making videos on TikTok and answering DMs and questions on Instagram. Eventually, brands started reaching out to me to partner with them and start advertising their products on my page. As I took Break Your Budget more seriously, I realized how much potential it had to become my full-time gig. In August 2021, I packed my bags and moved out of my parents' house and across the country to California. I quit my job after about six months in Los Angeles and haven't looked back since. I spent nearly five years working in corporate America, and it taught me a lot about myself, personal finances, life, and more. I'm going to unpack every lesson from my own journey throughout this book, while also providing you with tactical tips that you can implement to avoid making the same mistakes that I did. Basically, I want you to accelerate your financial success and hit your goals as early as possible, but to enjoy the process as well. 
Before we get into chapter one, I want to highlight a few of the most important lessons I've learned over the years. Lesson number one, once the bills start, they never stop. Yes, on social media, it looks like everyone around you is moving into a high rise in a big city and having their moment. However, if you can move home after college for a period of time, I highly recommend it. That's because once you move out after you graduate college and start paying bills, they literally never stop. You will always have a rent or a mortgage to pay along with all the other bills that come along with a place of your own. If I could do it over, I would have stayed home much longer and dealt with my daily commute. It would have allowed me to build up a more sizable nest egg and it would have taken the financial pressure off me for those first few years out of college. Culturally, the United States sets an expectation for people to become self-sufficient and independent very early on in life. In many other countries around the world, it's much more normal for young adults to move home after they go to university and stay there until they get married. This gives them ample time to work and save before entering the next phase of their lives. I hope in the future we in the U.S. normalize living at home. This is a quick note breakout. So in the book, there are little note sections that pop out so you can read them. And it says, note, it's important to recognize that moving home after college is a privilege. If you are in a situation where moving home isn't an option, consider living with roommates so you can split some of your bills and keep living costs down. Lesson number two, if you're serious about saving, you must prioritize and make sacrifices. When I decided to move to Boston, I sacrificed many of the comforts I had at home. I lived in a glorified closet. I had to do my laundry at a laundromat and I walked everywhere to avoid paying for unnecessary ride shares or transportations. I did all of these things to free up additional space in my budget to allocate to my savings. Often people who are not serious about making a difference in their finances will look for every excuse for why they can't save. Some of these are the same people who don't track their expenses, live alone in luxury apartments and pay $300 a month to park their car in a city with public transport. If your income is limited, you need to make sacrifices. Figure out what is and isn't important to you and then adjust from there. You'll learn how to do this throughout the rest of this book, but using myself as an example, I decided to live with roommates in apartments that were less than ideal because I spent the majority of my time at work and out of the house. If your situation is different, let's say you work a remote job and spend a lot of time at home, you may choose to prioritize a nicer apartment and cut back on your social expenses or non-essential lifestyle expenses. Lesson number three, your life is a result of your choices. If you take nothing else away from this entire book except for this lesson, then I consider it a success. Your life as an adult is, a, as an adult is the result of your choices. This is a tough pill to swallow and many young adults struggle with this because for the majority of their lives, choices were made for them. I want to make a disclaimer here. I understand that the playing field isn't equal for everyone and some people are given an unfair advantage while others are left in the dust to figure things out on their own. That being said, there comes a point in time where you get to decide your life and your parents, guardian, or family are no longer deciding for you. Owning the responsibility you have for choices that you can make is important. The sooner you realize this and accept it, the better off you'll be. Don't waste time blaming people for things in your life that go wrong. Start making choices that benefit you long-term. And lesson number four, you can find happiness working a nine to five job. Throughout this book, I often paint corporate America in a less than flattering light. That said, while the majority of my time working a nine to five was a negative experience, many positives came from it. I had built-in development and learning opportunities. I was given access to tons of software and systems that enabled me to build my own business in my free time. I made a lot of friends whom I am still close with years later. I had a stable paycheck. I had the ability to close my laptop and turn off work at the end of the day, and I had benefits such as a 401k and health insurance. You can find happiness working a corporate job. You just need to figure out what you like to do and how to operate in the workplace. And unfortunately, to do that, you also need to learn what you don't like to do. This part is tough, but it will take you down the path you need to be on. I'm really excited to start this journey with you. The chapters that follow provide a clean slate and clear strategies for how to move from lost and confused to confident and intentional with your money. The only requirements are a positive attitude and honesty with yourself. Are you ready? And that is the end of the introduction section of this book. So 
If you have not ordered Own Your Money, here is your sign to go do so. Obviously, everything's going to be linked in the show notes. You can purchase her on Amazon. If you do buy her, please, for the love of God, I'm going to beg you here, please go leave me a review. Um, It would really, really mean the world to me if you could leave me a review on Amazon. Like I said, I'm going to be running a contest um, for this week. So if you buy the book and you leave me a review on Amazon, you have to share the book on your stories. I know some people don't like to do that, but sorry. You've got to share a book on your stories. Make sure you tag me in it so that I can see it and make sure your profile is set to public so that I can see it. I'll take a screenshot. Once I acknowledge it, then you can reset your um, profile to public or to private and then leave me a review on Amazon and I will be selecting a handful of you guys to get a free personal finance dashboard or a gift card of your choosing. So yeah, I'm so excited. I can't believe the day is here. Go order Own Your Money. Let me know if you like it. Send me a DM and I will catch you next week in the next podcast episode. Um, And we'll do like a full life catch up and talk about all the things that have gone on over the last couple of weeks. So... Thank you for listening and I will see you next week.